All right, guys, I'm back with uh, Yishai Fleischer, a great friend, international spokesperson for Hebron, Hebron in English. Uh, we're talking about something really, really, really important, and that is the biblical highway. Now, people may not know what the biblical highway is. A lot of people call it a really bland uh, name, up to date, and they call it Highway 60. So you've worked on a project of uh, reviving the ancient pathway of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all the biblical characters of, uh, of the Bible, when you read the Bible, they all went on this one route. They're all, they, their feet went through that path. And so you're trying to revive this ancient pathway. Uh, tell us about this project of the uh, biblical highway. Book of Genesis is full of cities. It has cities that are named. Mm -hmm. And they're like Shechem, close by here, Shechem. Yeah. Uh, then it's going to be, Jerusalem is kind of mentioned in, in, a, in, in the hidden ways. Uh, but then you have Be Bethel, Beit El, mm -hmm. uh, you have Bethlehem, yep. you have uh, Hebron, of course, and Beersheba. Uh, and I just, as I love the book of Genesis, as everybody should here, we've got to <laughs> right. read the book of Genesis, okay? Yeah. Read the book of Genesis, that's my it's advice. It's like the foundations, let's yeah. start at the beginning. That's yeah. right. Yeah, okay. Read the book of Genesis, know the book of Genesis, <laughs> you'll understand everything right. from there. And so uh, I started teaching classes about the seven holy cities, uh, which were, which were, Beersheba, Beersheba, mm -hmm. uh, Hebron, yep. Bethlehem, three before Jerusalem, in the middle Jerusalem, yep. and then Bethel, Bethel, Shiloh, Shiloh, mm -hmm. and Shechem, Shechem, okay? Seven holy cities, Jerusalem in the, in the middle, and really the most of the Bible happened right along this route. And so I was like looking at it, I'm like, this is on one road. Right. Today it's called Route 60. One road, which is, which is it was obvious to me, the biblical highway. People sometimes like to call it the Patriarch's Highway. I was like, this is a bad brand, okay? <laughs> because first thing, nobody likes patriarchy today. And also, it's not fair to talk about patriarchs when you have patriarchs and matriarchs. Right. And when you have mamas and papas. And on top of that, I don't think that... That's not even being woke. That's just being respectful. Like, you got to oh, talk about the patriarchs. When you talk about patriarchs. patriarchs and matriarchs, you're not being woke. You're being conservative. You're being conservative. That's right. Okay? <laughs> That's right. Because some people don't know that it still takes mothers and <laughs> fathers. fathers. See, we're being... See, I'm being conservative, <laughs> This actually. is very conservative. I tell people all the time, like, no, 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 that's, that's actually my conservative streak. Uh, in any case, uh, the biblical highway uh, is a road. Yeah. Now, coming with my American background, I was like, this is an American-style idea. Because in America, when I was a kid... My parents took me on uh, to Shenandoah and Skyline Drive and all these famous roads, Route 80, Route 80, whatever. And I learned about Route 66, which I've never been on, but it's a heritage highway. Right. And I thought to myself, we need to rename this highway the Biblical Highway. Uh, we need to connect people to this to the idea that first thing, when you come to Israel, you can connect to the Bible. Wow. That's like so simple, so and yet and yet it's not. Right. And yet it's missing a lot of times. People don't know that the Bible happens in the land of Israel. When you come to the state of Israel to travel here, yeah. You're going to connect with the stories of the Bible. And so the idea was to create a, a, a touristic educational attraction that bypasses all the politics and all the issues. And it just says, forget forget about the conflicts, forget about Israelis and Arabs and all that. This is the biblical highway. It goes from Beersheba up to Shechem. It actually goes even north of Shechem. Right. Uh, through the, first, it goes through the Gilboa mountain range. That's where, that's where Saul fell. That's where Saul and his son Jonathan fell. Right. It goes into the... Uh, Jezreel Valley, wow. Megiddo, uh, and also the Tavor, yep. and ends at Nazareth. So you have here wow. really a road that 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 is like all the Bible happens on this road. Wow! Uh, and so so the very simple idea was let's rename it, mm -hmm. let's uh, or add a name to it, the Biblical Highway Route sixty, the Biblical Highway, and uh, let's also create uh, scenic overlooks for Americans. When I say scenic overlook, everybody's like, yeah, scenic overlook. But in Israel, it's not so common to think about that, that there's actually a drive off mm -hmm. and you're looking at it and you're understanding. And it goes to the mountain region. A large part of it cuts right to the Samaria, Judea mountain region of Israel. So Right. So the heart of it, of course, is Jerusalem, which is the capital, and also the heart of Judea and Samaria. And then you have Judea to the south of Jerusalem, Samaria to the north. So basically, it's like this. It's like a, para a, para uh -huh. a parabola, right? Is that the right. way you say? So uh, it, it, you know, it's it's just it's it's uh, it's a desert region, right? Going up to the mountains yeah. and then coming down on the other side. So this would have been the ancient pathway that all the patriarchs uh, walked on. There's and there's, matriarchs and, and matriarchs. You need Sorry, both so of I got We got to get this right. <laughs> we already talked about yeah. this. Uh, all along the way in the ancient paths, this, this pathway would have been carved with springs, a pathway that was uh, passable back in the ancient days. Uh, where they would where go, there's wells and springs of water that they would have uh, been able to refresh themselves along the way. So you're talking about bringing that up to date, a refreshing pathway uh, where people, tourists from around the world 
because tourists right now are, when they come to tours in Israel, they're leaving out about 85% of the Bible sites, right. and they're focusing on the the you know modern the, the, the modern Tel Aviv and these places, right. which so, are also biblical, right? Yeah, that, the Jonah <laughs> happened in Jaffa, right? Like right. these are also biblical. Yeah. Jericho, you know, these places are, are biblical, but uh -huh. the heartland, and it says it here, the biblical heartland. The biblical, you see that? Biblical the biblical heartland. heartland it, that's that's lost a lot of times. So, but do you see this playing an integral part in the tourism of Israel and where you'd like to see it go? Tourism so are we wanting and education. to make this more biblical. Are we wanting right. to make it more educational and biblical, not a not a modern day, is it, people know about Israel because of its ancient heritage. Right. So you're trying to bring it back. A lot of, of Israelis are trying to, to make Israel into like a, a startup start nation. Right. Trying, but most people, yeah, that's good. And it'll continue. And we're glad about that. But uh, I think what, where you're going with this is, is to connect everyone in the world to Israel's old, ancient principles. So-called Old Testament, Book of Genesis. Right. We don't call it the Old Testament, we call it the Torah. The Torah. So you got there Torah, you got, you got, got Torah. Torah. We call it the Torah. Uh, and and of course, the, the people around the world love the Bible. Mm -hmm. They love the Tanakh. Okay. And and therefore, that's what's going to connect they, them. They now, be part of that. when you when you land in Australia, I've been to Australia twice. You land in Australia, you're like, oh, this is Australia, because wherever you go, you look. There's there's the they're selling you kangaroos, didgeridoos. <laughs> uh, uh, you know what, what else is Australian? You know uh, what else is Australian? Uh, boomerangs, and, right, boomerangs and whatever. Right. You know you're in Australia when you land yeah. in Texas. You know you're in Texas. Mm -hmm. There's lassos and the cow cowboy hats and the whole thing. When you land in New Jersey, I'm from New Jersey, so I'm not dissing New Jersey. But when you land in New Jersey, you're like, it doesn't have a market. It doesn't have. Right. It doesn't have a brand. Mm -hmm. it doesn't have a brand. Israel's got to have a brand. I'm not saying it's the only brand, but I'm saying, simply put, this is one of the most popular and important brands. If you allow me, also just one second, just very quickly, I can run through it. Explain to people the, what the what the brand of the biblical highway is. It's the seven. Let's do it, and then after you explain this, we're going to watch a little clip that you did. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Seven explain. cities. Very simple. Beersheba, Beersheba. That's where Abraham first set up his shop, his tent, to teach wayfarers about mm -hmm. the one God. Right. Okay. Hebron. That's the tomb of the patriarchs and matriarchs. It's still there today, uh, and it's also where King David had his first kingdom. Mm -hmm. Bethlehem. Important to Christians, but important to all people who love the the Bible in. King David's buried there. Ruth is 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 from there. She came there from Moab. Yep. The book of Ruth happened there in Bethlehem. Okay. Then you go up uh, to Jerusalem. Do I have to say other than the word Jerusalem? Two temples stood there. That's where that's where Abraham almost sacrificed his son Isaac. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where we are working on the third temple. <laughs> that's uh, right. right? And, Another show. And that's the first show. That's right. Uh, and then it's Bethel. Bethel. Yeah. That's where the dream of the ladder was, mm -hmm. uh, where, where Jacob saw mm -hmm. a, a connection between heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. And that's also uh, where Jacob got another name, his super name, which is Israel. Mm -hmm. Jacob is his Clark Kent name, right? <laughs> when he takes off the Jacob shirt, underneath is Israel, right? Israel. That happened in Bethel. Yeah. Shiloh. The tabernacle stood there mm -hmm. for 400 years, and that's where the story of Hannah and the birth of Samuel the prophet happened. And then finally, uh, Shechem or Shechem, lots of stories there, um, including the place of the blessings and the curses that happened uh, when the Jewish people came into the land with Joshua. And then you go, as we said before, you go a little over the top back on the hills there, and you have the Gilboa Ridge, that's where Saul fell and, and Jonathan fell. And then you have the Jezreel Valley, Megiddo, and and uh, the the beautiful Tavor, that's where the story of Tavor, the prophetess. And finally, for for Christian folks, it's important also in Nazareth. So mm -hmm. you have you have you have so much of the right Bible on, the on, on one one highway. Let's use it as a teaching tool. Yeah. Now uh, I made a little movie about it, and yep. maybe we could check we're, it out. We're gonna catch this uh, video right now, and then I've got a political question for you right at the end. Check it out. Some of humanity's greatest stories took place on one road in the Holy Land. Stretching along Israel's central mountain ridge, it's called Route 60, the Biblical Highway. The road begins in the south, in the desert city of Be'er Sheva, named by the biblical forefathers Abraham and Isaac. Here, Abraham built an oasis to teach travelers the truth of one God. Next is Hebron. Here lies the ancestral burial cave purchased by Abraham 3,800 years ago and where the biblical forefathers and mothers were buried. Today it is topped by a majestic 2,000-year-old edifice erected by King Herod. 3,000 years ago, King David made Hebron his first capital city, and here he was crowned king of Israel. 
Northwards is Bethlehem, where Jacob buried his beloved wife, the matriarch, Rachel. Bethlehem is also the setting for the Book of Ruth, the righteous Moabite convert and great-grandmother of King David, who was born and anointed here. Jerusalem, jewel in the heart of the Holy Land, and home to Mount Moriah, site of the binding of Isaac. The first and second temples stood here, the pride of two independent Jewish commonwealths. An ultimate symbol of the connection between man and God, Jerusalem is the spiritual capital of the world. Beit El. While fleeing from his brother Esau, Jacob came here and experienced a prophetic dream of a ladder connecting heaven and earth. Jacob named the place Beit El, House of God. 20 years later, he would return with his wives and children and receive a new name, Israel. Shiloh, spiritual center for almost 400 years after the children of Israel entered the land. Here, the biblical Hannah prayed for a son and was answered with the birth of Samuel the prophet. Shechem, while congregated on the twin mountains of Grizim and Eval, the Jewish people received blessings and curses. Here, Joshua buried the bones of Joseph, carried to the land of Israel by the Jewish people during their sojourn from Egypt. The road continues north to the Gilboa Ridge and Jezreel Valley. Here on majestic Mount Tavor, the prophetess Devorah sang a song of victory, and nearby the fearless Yael slew Sisra, commander of Hazor's army. Here King Saul and his son Jonathan fell in battle, and in nearby Megiddo, the armies of Israel clashed with invaders. The biblical highway is an ancient road that brings the cities of the Bible and their stories to life, and it's reborn today as Israel's Route 60. The highway, the Holy Land, and the cities of the Bible are waiting for you, where your epic journey is about to begin. Is that nice? Did you like that movie? Yeah, it was fantastic. It was fantastic. <laughs> you gotta, you, this is this fantastic. It was a lot of work. You, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be an incredible uh, movement that's, that's right. starting. And we're also about to talk about, uh, after the political question, uh, some political people. Right? That's right. So the political question is, what do we do with the parts of the highway that the jihadists have already taken over? Right. There's, a, there's large swaths that are free and open, and they're great, and right. nobody should be afraid to travel them. So we're not right. going to tell you that you can't travel it, because most of the places are incredible, safer to drive than many highways in the rest of Israel, uh, safer than most highways in America, right? Um, in what sense? In, in sense? in the driving sense? In the driving sense, yeah. 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 Less, less, less people die in car wrecks here than, than a lot of other places in the world. But let's, let's talk about the specific zones that are cut off. Uh, maybe maybe the ones uh, that go through Shechem. We can't drive through there yet. Right. So maybe a part of this is going to bring some awareness to the nations that there's some jihadists that have closed down parts of the biblical highway. I wish it was only the jihadists, but sadly it's also the state of Israel itself has allowed... Yielded uh, to the... Yielded. Yeah. Th they created this idea, part, mm. uh, a government in the 90s created this idea that certain parts would be given away right. to the so-called Palestinian Authority. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I think you're right when you call them jihadists because that's who's taken over. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the, the Palestinian Authority was always going to be jihadists since it was started by Yasser Arafat, one of the great jihadists and haters of, the, of, of Israel and, right. and a person who sought to destroy Israel. So yes, there are parts of the road that, that you have to bypass. There are bypasses. Mm -hmm. yep. There are bypasses around it, especially uh, in northern Samaria. You will not be able to go through she Shechem, Shechem, and Janine. You'll have to bypass that. But there is a bypass. It is safe. It is good. The rest is open and free. Yep. Uh, and of course, though, through the love of this road, maybe one day congressional recognition of this road, certainly Israeli recognition of the importance of this road, Let's do uh, it. there'll be more mm -hmm. funding and more concern and more beautification. Before you come to Israel, you're going to download the uh, the Biblical Highway app. App, that's right. You're going to see the sites, right? We're going to have that's all right. of this. this is gonna Absolutely. Be and you're going to you're, and you're going to you're going to make it. I want it to be that you're like, oh, I want to go to Masada, and I want to do the Biblical Highway. That's going to be on the bucket I, I want list. it to be. It's just got to be a, a that's brand right. that's in your head. Okay, so most people think that we are just talking about this crazy idea, and this is going to be great. But there's actually some really big political players that have laid out and agree with you in this idea. That's the right. Knesset has talked about, you've brought it up in Knesset to try to get this pushed through. There's also some big players in America, David Friedman, the former uh, U.S. ambassador to Israel, and uh, Mike Pompeo, former Secretary of State. These two guys have created a film. Tell us about what they did, because you created the idea. You're the idea guy. We got the idea guy here with us right <laughs> now, uh, and now it's gone big, and it's about well, to go even bigger. As biblical folks say, 
you know, God put it on my heart. And then <laughs> exactly. he, d- he put yeah. it on my heart. He did. Uh, and, uh, and it was through teaching Torah yeah. that this idea came around. Uh, David Friedman, uh, Ambassador David Friedman, uh, set out to make a movie mm-hmm. uh, with the folks at TBN. And he brought in uh, Mike Pompeo, former Secretary of State. Yeah. And they went, they choppered from spot to spot on the biblical highway. Wow. And they made a video that is going, not a video, a movie, a, a feature length film that is gonna be shown in a thousand uh, movie theaters, I think wow. September 18th and 19th. Uh, and this movie is going to show you all the sites, uh, including for Christian folks, mm. um, uh, but the biblical sites, and they're they're going to be really showing you the connection to the land. Wow. And it's a beautiful film. They did great shooting. They took it very seriously. And, and I'm telling the Israeli government, I'm like, look, Let's here's a movie, it. it's coming, we got to match, we got to make sure that we've got that naming done and all that kind of stuff, because we're working on the political side as well, it's a kind of pincer yeah. movement. Mm-hmm. We've got, we got the American Good. and international folks' interest, and then we have the Israeli government underneath, and, and we're pushing together to recognize this highway. It's been a dream of mine for a long time, and uh, you know, I got a lobbyist and we're working, uh, but of course it's really God's blessings, it's, it's his story it's god's right. story it's the story of the book of genesis mm-hmm. it's the story uh, of the great of the great prophets and and the great r- route this is the holy mountain mm-hmm. that's the bottom line when yeah. you walk in this yeah. mountain it and as my friend Zev Ornstein from city of david says you know when when you when you when you're in the places that the bible took place that's when the bible comes to life yeah uh, and so and so that's exactly what's happening and we from, need more people from the nations to come to israel and experience the bible absolutely that's well, going to help us in a lot you know of ways. what you know what I don't know if we need it. I think they need it. You know <laughs> they I mean? need it. I think they need exactly it. You know, right, I, I think it's for them. I, you know, yeah. for I think I think. Yeah. And I've uh, I got to tell you, Josh. So many times people stop me at the airport. Mm. They're like, "Are you from Israel? <laughs> like, can I just touch can I a touch little you? bit? Can I? But not touch you like this. Yeah, can no. I touch that Bible? One time, mm-hmm. one time, I was I was uh, stuck and and this lady was helping me and she was looking at me funny the whole time. I already know the look, you know. <laughs> and she and she starts just asking me if I'm yeah. from Israel. And she started crying. This was during the COVID period. She said, I don't think I'll ever be able to make it to Israel. That's the way the world looked back then. I took out a coin of Abraham mm. that we that we made in Hebron. Yeah. I gave her this coin. I told her, you couldn't come to Abraham. Abraham came to you. I mean, she was a bucket of tears. You know what I mean? Wow. People want it all People over do. the world. They want to yeah. connect to the Bible. Yeah. Let's give it to them. Yeah, yeah. And let's make a highway. Let's do it. Guys, it's actually happening. It was a dream for a long time. The, the, it's going to be in America. We're, you stay tuned because we're going to be talking about that on the show. I'm at, this is not going to go by. September coming around, uh, we're going to be talking about more about this incredible documentary. And we're going to be pushing forward uh, this project. And uh, But we'll keep all you guys in tune with that. Yishai, thanks for the idea, the inspiration. And look forward to traveling this uh, biblical highway Amen. more. Let's Amen. keep let's keep the teaching going. Let's keep the uh, the, the nations connected to this highway. We're going to be driving this highway. I can just imagine all the it's tours God's that highway, you're going to be you know? God's highway. You know? You're going to be teaching a lot of people on this uh, this biblical highway. You got a lot of people to come and see it. Appreciate it, you said. Thank you very much, Jeff. Yeah.